of godliness you are pillars of the church and humbled the proud fire worshippers O much afflicted hierarch Achisimus, Achisimus, joseph and aeophilus pray to christ our god to grant us his great mercy thou dost abandon earthly glory and wast illumined by the light of god's <coughs> inspiration wherefore thou dost shine on earth like a fadeless star for thou wast found worthy to hear the divine voice like Moses, and wast also like the angels and the treasury of grace, O holy father Joachinius. Thou didst bear the fruit of knowledge, and as like the apostles' own candor, and a faithful priest, to go with Hermias, thy companion in contest, intercede with the Lord, who has glorified, the, who has glorified thee to grant us his great mercy. Let the faithful honour, let the faithful honour these two betrothed athletes, Galactican and modest Epist- Epistema, their ascetic labours blossomed in martyrdom. Therefore we cry to them, glory to him who has strengthened you, glory to him who has crowned you, glory to him who works healings for all. Thou was shown to the church as another Paul, and a zealot among priests, by the confession of the faith, Abel and the blood of Zacharias, cry with thee unto the Lord, O righteous Father, entreat Christ our God to grant us his great mercy. Thou didst estrange thy pillar with tears in thy vigils, and in labours bear fruit an hundredfold. As a shepherd thou didst grant forgiveness to all who came to thee, Father Lazarus, intercede of Christ our God, that our souls may be saved. <coughs> In Congressbury. In, in Congressbury Monastery, thou wast laid to rest, O Father Conger, evangelizer of Somerset and teacher of monastics. Pray to God for us that we may, that we may worthily follow in thy footsteps, bringing the light of the faith to those who languish in the darkness of unbelief, making this a sanguine age of saints, that, that thereby many souls may be saved. Like Supreme leaders of the heavenly hosts, we implore you, that by your prayers he will encircle us, unworthy as we are, with the protection of the wings of your immaterial glory, and guard us who fall down before you and fervently cry. Do Deliver us from dangers, for you are the commanders of the powers above. Right. That one we use every Monday. That's the oh, trepine right. for every Monday. Trepine of yeah. So now you're going to do 
if you wouldn't mind, Nicholas, could you do the tr the, the guitar kins now? Mm -hmm. That one. Thou didst serve the divine mysteries blamelessly, <laughs> and was thyself an acceptable sacrifice. For thou didst drink Christ's chalice, or Akepsimus, together with thy fellow martyrs, pray unceasingly for us all. We have come together today to honour thy memory, and implore, and implore thee to obtain mercy for us from the Lord, O Holy Father Jonicus. With the spiritual plough you cultivated souls, by the preaching of the word you have offered to Christ the sheaves of your contests, martyr Nicander and Hermias. You were instructed by Titus and became divine tablets of doctrine. You were numbered among the hosts of martyrs, for you were illustrious in mighty contests, O Galact Galaction, with thy fellow sufferer Epistema, pray unceasingly to the one God for us all. Thou didst shine on earth as a star from heaven, O Paul, and dost now enlighten the church, for which thou didst suffer and lay down thy life. Thy innocent blood cries out to the Lord, with that of Abel and Zacharias. The church is singing to thee in gladness, since thou art a great light, O Lazarus. Cease not to intercede with Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Supreme leaders of God's armies and ministers of the divine glory, princes of the bodiless angels and guides of men, ask what is good for us and great mercy as supreme leaders of the bodiless hosts. Right, so, can you put that on the other side? Uh, so the American do the concerto turn two. Thou did Christ in the tomb, O powerful Saviour, and seeing the miracle of hell was terrified. And the dead arose, was creation of the sight of rejoices with thee. And Adam exults, and the world of my Saviour ever sings to thee. Who can describe thy mighty works of holy John? For thou dost brought forth miracles, thou art a source of healing, and the sin to seek for our souls as the emotion and friend of Christ. Now we come to the official. <coughs> it's going to be turned to for the the we'll sing now after you've said it, Nicholas, okay? For holy art thou God, and please send up the glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now for ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and strong,
the first part. The Lord is my strength and my song. And is become my salvation. Wisdom. The reading is from the second epistle to the Corinthians by the Holy Apostle Paul. Let us return. Brethren, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor, under Aratus the king, was guarding the city of the, Damasc the, the Damascenes with a garrison, desiring to apprehend me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was caught up in the third heaven, and I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. How he was caught up into paradise, and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I forbear, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measures, above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me, and he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Peace be with thee, and with thy spirit, wisdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O Lord, save the King, and hear us in the day when we call upon thee. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom, stand upright. <clears throat> Let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. And, and with thy spirit. spirit. The reading is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. Glory to thee. The Lord said this parable. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried aloud and said, 
Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send the deserts that may, he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, <clears throat> Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted that you are tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. <clears throat> Then he said, I beg you, Father, therefore, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one riseth from the dead. <clears throat> At that time, Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory, Glory to thee. We have read two Gospels today because yesterday was St. Cosmos and St. Damien, who were, I suppose, equal to the Apostles in their preaching. And whenever you, whenever you see that reading you know that 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 it's actually referring to the apostleship that jesus was um giving to those people even beyond his death burial and resurrection to those saints that he esteemed being worthy of being apostleship so we read that particular passage from the gospel on those days this parable the rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day there's things to note here. Um, on verse 25, Abraham says to him, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. So that rather points to the fact that we have memory in hell. Now, it's a great saying in the church uh, amongst the saints uh, that we should keep our mind in hell and despair not. We shouldn't be frightened at this. It's something that obviously God in his wisdom has elected for all of us to be aware of this torment without God, this absence of God. And let's be honest, we all have experienced it in this life because the saints again attest to this where they have moments where God is present with them, giving them comfort and being, and being made aware of his presence and grace in the world as well as in heaven and from heaven but there's also these great gaps where one could be praying earnestly and a lot of the saints talk about this praying day and night and yet there seems to be an absence of God's comfort in their life so one shouldn't be surprised that we read this <clears throat> this passage but we should despair um, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets in the final verse neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead so what does that speak about in life basically if you can't believe in the life that's all around you already then how are you going to believe in life beyond death of the tissues I think you know, that's the lesson to be learnt there. Moses and the prophets pointed to God's grace towards his people in Israel because it, the Old Testament was written mainly in Babylon. Um, a lot of the passages were written there. Um, and the people were in uh, exile. So when one once perhaps think of an absence of life as being an exile from God, because Christ is the life. He is the way and the life. And he says, without me, you can do nothing. 
And if you don't have my body and blood within you, <clears throat> you do not have life in you. So I think one should read this passage, although it's a warning, of course it's a warning about making riches an idol here, because all things are God's. And, you know, uh, if you make an idol your God, it will disappear in the end, but God cannot disappear because he holds all things in the hollow of his hand. But to ignore the poor is something for our conscience. And so we should nurture our conscience by doing good deeds as the church prescribes for us. Amen. Amen. Amen.